Yo, what is up with my friend behind the cam? It's another episode of Talks with Seven. Just wanted to bring something to our attention real quick. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. But um, what I want to talk about is a historical event that happened in the 12th or 11th century where you had a Greek army that built a wooden Trojan horse, right? And the point of this horse was to infiltrate the city of Troy. Now, I don't know if this has any significant meaning, but I Googled the name Troy. Like, what does the name Troy mean? And ironically, the name Troy means foot soldier. Now, how ironic is it that I'm just tying two and two together here for my sake? You know, this is like sometimes I just connect dots and maybe I'm connecting dots that's not there. But the name Troy means foot soldier. The Most High is a king. He has a kingdom. And those of us who follow his word and study his word day and night and follow into his army, we are foot soldiers in the kingdom. We are foot soldiers in his army. And how crazy is it that when the Greeks used this wooden horse, they were doing it to infiltrate the city. And how ironic is it that the enemy does the same thing to the believers of Christ, right? He uses wooden Trojan horses to distract us and he uses them as a diversion. And so it's not going to be long. I just got a question for you all. We all have them, right? So my question to you is, what is your Trojan horse? What is your diversion? What is your distraction? What, what distraction or diversion has the enemy used in your life to pull us away from the will of the Father? Because I, I noticed that um, it's never easy when you decide to pick up your cross and walk with and walk with the Most High. There's always going to be a diversion. There's always going to be a distraction. There's always going to be something that's trying to change your focus and put it elsewhere than where it needs to be. We we have so many distractions in this world right now, and it's taken today for me to realize that they're nothing but Trojan horses. Everything we look around and see is nothing but a Trojan horse. The money, the cars, the clothes, the fancy houses, the big mansions. Like, oh man, I make six figures. It's all a Trojan horse. And now I finally, I finally understand why the Bible says it's easier for a camel to enter into the kingdom of heaven through eye of a needle than it is for a rich man. And it's because all these diversions and distractions they take you away from studying his word. They take you from meditate day and night. They keep you away from seeking his kingdom and seeking his face. Because here's a revelation that was also brought to me. America is a democracy, right? So in a democracy, it's of the people, for the people, and by the people. But the Bible speaks about a kingdom. The Bible is not about democracy. And so if we're, we're speaking about a kingdom, if we're going off the Bible principles of what a kingdom is, it's of the king, for the king, and by the king, which means that everything that we do shall be of the king. Everything we do shall be for the king, and everything we do shall, shall be by the king. But we have gotten so used to this democracy mindset that we walk straight into the kingdom trying to make demands. And who are we? <laughs> Pride before the fall, right? And so... Of course, that's how Satan operated in heaven. This is, why, this is why he got expelled from heaven. Because he's supposed to be doing things of the king, for the king, and by the king. And yet, he's operating in a democracy mind state, a democratic mind state, you know? And I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I'm not none of those things. I don't, I don't care about voting. I don't vote for anything. <laughs> um... I'm just I'm proving a point because I realize that if we do not seek the kingdom first, how could you ever expect to walk with God the right way? For he is your king. And we say that he's our king. And yet we're walking by way of selfish and self-centered ways and paths that, that he did not lay out before us. So. What is your Trojan horse? 
What is the, what is the diversion? What is your distraction? And this is not me coming off as if I don't have any. Because I've had some, and I have, I, I still currently now have, I pray to God every morning that reveal to me my distractions, my diversions. What is my Trojan horses? Because I, I know, I just realized that the enemy uses these things. He just uses these things to take us off the path that the, the Most High is destined for us to be on. And if he can take you off the path that you're destined to be on, then he can change your course. He can change your fate. We must be obedient. We must not allow him to come into our city, our temples, with a Trojan horse. We must not give him power. And it's also ironic that <laughs> the Trojan horse is also synonymous with the Bible when it talks about even the angel transformed himself as an angel of light. No, excuse me. It says even... Even the devil transformed, even Satan transfer, transformed himself as an angel of light. And I believe that's 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. He, transform, he transforms himself as an angel of light so that we as human beings, sometimes we're gullible, like we're so gullible. And we're so naive that we walk right into his trap, right into his snares. I have a talk, I be having talks all the time, and it's just like, people have to realize that Satan has had time to study us. He knows the word. He was here before humans were. He was, he was right next to God in heaven. And so you don't think that that entity knows you? You don't think he knows how to tamper with your emotions? You don't think he knows what can cause you to fall? He studies us. Demons study us. And I'm so tired of these spineless churches, man. Like, they teach everything except for war. How could you defeat your enemy if you don't even know he exists? How could you defeat your enemy if, you're not, if you don't study his moves? It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that you got a lot of people who go to church and they don't they have no idea of how to fight. Even though the Bible tells us how to fight. The Bible tells us how to fight. Put on the full armor of God. Resist temptation. All these all these David David taught us how to fight. <laughs> David has Psalms teaching us how to fight. Everything that he went through, his life is literally dedicated to a fight. And um, it just, it's just proof that as believers, I know, I know we like to believe, and I, I'm using we very loosely because I've, I've come out of that mindset a long time ago, but I know it's so easy to believe that um, we live here on earth and we serve, we serve a God that is just also loving. But they forget to mention that the Most High, is, he also has a wrath. He also has a wrath. And it's a terrible thing to fall into. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He, he does have a wrath. And there is a war going on in heaven. And there was a war that was in heaven. For Michael fought against the angels. Of Satan's angels. And he fought against Satan. The great dragon. We have to understand that this world is not just. that. Like There, there is a great area. And that great area is the spirit realm. So you got the white area, which is obviously the light. You got the dark, the black area, which is obviously darkness. But no one seems to know anything about that gray area. And that gray area is, is, is spiritual in nature. It's spiritual in nature. That gray area is the spirit realm. Have you ever had a dream and you wonder why um, things seem so evil in these dreams? Or you ever had a good dream and you, 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 you're like you're just overjoyed and you're just overly peaceful. Like That's how you know that there is good and evil at work here. And I know people wake up every morning and it's just like, you know, oh yeah, I read the Bible and I go to church. But God wants more from you than that. He, he deserves more from you than, than just going to church and, oh, I read the Bible. Like, 
You read the Bible, but do you understand it? This Trojan horse is a very critical thing. And it's placed on my heart to even, it's, it's been placed on my heart to express how crucial it is, how pivotal it is. Because Trojan horses can ultimately lead you down a path of destruction. Because that's what happened when the Greeks decided to use their Trojan horse. They slaughtered that city of Troy. And just imagine it. It's women and children in those cities as well. They didn't even see it coming. They didn't see it coming. So again, I ask you, what is your distraction? What is the Trojan horse that the devil has used against you? And don't look at it like, I don't need to, I don't need to know all that. Just look at it like you need to figure that out quickly before he creates another Trojan horse. And by the time you know it, he has crumbled your whole empire, your whole entire kingdom, your whole entire foundation. Because once a foundation is destroyed, the building can no longer stand. <laughs> Appreciate that, brother. Once, a, once the foundation is depleted, your building will fall. And so I just pray that all of you who see this video, that your foundation is steep in the Most High, that it's created and it's rooted in the Most High. So that we may see these Trojan horses before they enter into the gates of our cities. And when I say cities, I mean our temples. I mean our souls. Our hearts. These things are crucial. These things are crucial, man. But I just want to pray real quick. And I hope, I hope this prayer helps who all needs to see this. I hope that it reaches whoever needs to see this. And like I say, my, and like I told you guys before, my prayers and these talks and my songs are not just for you guys. I am also to a human being living on the face of this earth. And I fight every single day. I fight every single day. And the reason I fight every day is because there's always, there's always when you are on fire for the most high, the enemy, your adversary, the adversary and his minions, they're like firefighters. They're coming and trying to put that fire out. So without further ado, I just want to want to pray. I just, I just want to pray right now. So first off, gracious and most heavenly father, I want you to put your healing hands, most high father, on anybody who's watching this video right now. I want to pray, Most High Father, that you give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to see the Trojan horses, Most High Father, before they enter into the gates, Lord God. Any distractions and diversions, Most High Father, that the enemy may be planning or that he's already planned, Most High Father. No weapon form shall prosper against our lives, Most High Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, protect us, Most High, Most High, Most High Father. Keep us under your wing, Most High Father. Psalms 91, Most High Father, we shall abide under your shadow, Most High Father, and we shall take refuge in you, Most High, Lord, Most High God. I thank you, Most High Father, for the wisdom you have placed on my life, Most High Father. I thank you for revelation, Lord God. I thank you for the people who are seeing this video right now, Most High Father. Whatever they may be going through in their personal lives, Most High God, I pray that you put your hands on it, Most High Father, and you heal them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. If anybody is struggling financially, Most High Father, anybody struggling with their sexuality, Most High Father, anybody struggling mentally, Lord God, anybody struggling emotionally, Most High Father, I pray that they be healed in the mighty name of Jesus, Most High Father. You have given us the power to heal, Most, Most High Father, and cast out demons so in the mighty name of jesus i pray this prayer lord god and we shall all seek your kingdom and seek your face lord god we pray that we meet you out in the deep waters most our father we pray for deeper revelation most our father we pray that your mysteries be revealed to us most our father in the mighty name of jesus i pray this prayer and all of the saints said amen i pray that this video has blessed you and again this is another episode with seven of talks with seven until the next time i love you all peace